Hi everyone, it's Mike here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I've got another creative itch that I need to scratch and to scratch it I'm going to be creating a collaged art journal page in the last page in my Dilusions 8x8 journal. Okay, so this is the Dilusions journal. So this is the one where I've just got the last remaining page. Now I did have it open. Um, there we are, that's the one. So this is the last page in this journal, completely the last page. So um, perfect size for doing what I want to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab some white gesso and put a little bit of a base down onto the page. Um, let's just see if I've got a cleanish brush. Hello, Mr. Bentley, what are you doing? Come to see me, yeah, come to see me. Oh, he's a good lad. So as you can tell, I've got a visitor. So this is a rather grungy old bottle of gesso. It obviously needs using up, so we're going to just go all over the page. Now the background on this, um, you're not really going to see a huge amount of. So while this, because it's going to be covered up with my, uh, my collage, so we'll just give it a real kind of uneven kind of grungy coat. It is quite thick. I suppose I could have really sprayed some water into it, but yeah, do you know what? So while this is still kind of wettish, I'm also going to bring in um, some Rossetti Red. So this is a, a translucent paint. So I'll grab another paintbrush because I'm not going to need a huge amount of this. And I'm just going to put that just in the background like that, that'll do. And then grab that white gesso again and then just work that in just to kind of make the background a bit more mottled and uneven. It just breaks that stark white. Let me grab some more of the gesso. just as a kind of base. And like I said, a lot of this is going to get covered up anyway, but it just helps, if you like, just to kind of break that fear of the white page. If you just put paint down, then it's no longer white. So while that's in there, like I get a little bit more of that Rossetti. work it in then I can grab a little bit more white gesso okay so that's now kind of reddish and pinkish which is not necessarily the colors that I want perfectly or all the time in the background so I would want to dull that down a little bit vintage it up a little bit so this is a kind of like darkish brown it's called ugly duckling Again, it's translucent, so you will see a little bit of that colour underneath. So I'll just get another smallish brush. And like I said, when you're just doing a background that you intend to cover up anyway, then, you know, there's no real kind of need to be too exact. And this year, the mantra is, you know, who cares about perfection? Learn to care less, really, about perfection this year. Embrace the imperfection. I mean, there are those that say, you know, why bother to strive for perfection when it's far more interesting, <laughs> when it isn't perfect. Okay, so we've got a little bit of a grungy background going on. If it's a little bit too dark, just grab a little bit more white, a little bit more gesso, and just create some different tones. I 
almost make the background look like it's kind of distressed and aged and old, like wallpaper peeling off. Just play until you get a kind of background that isn't too vivid, but also has enough texture. Can you see where you've got those lines and the, the grunginess coming through? Um, so you've got enough texture in the background to provide a bit of interest. And it doesn't really take long, and really doesn't take long to dry either, because it's such a thin coat. But just because... You can always tell when your paper is still damp, because it will feel cold. So there you go. Right, so on to the collage pieces. So I went through my collection um, of ephemera and pulled out certain images. So we've got little receipts, a postcard, there's a little sheet of like uh, architect's drawings there, there's another French receipt there, there's a little um, illustration of some bird's eggs, a stamp, a ticket, a little map. Uh, now then, so the map, although you can't actually tell, for those of you that are into the HG Wells, this is actually is a map of Horsell Common near Woking, where the first Martian landed in War of the Worlds. There you go, that's the actual Horsell Common where it happened. In the book, in the story, obviously it didn't happen in real life. Um, so the image that I've been kind of like had in my head for a while um, was um, an animal, well actually a bird, with a crown on. So when I was watching one of these American um, house flip kind of decoration, redecoration, restoration programmes, um, I think it was the one of the girls in Indianapolis, um, was it Two Chicks and a Hammer? Um, there was one of the houses that they'd finished and then they'd staged at the end, there was an ornament and it was like a metal bird, um, but it had a crown on it. And I just thought it was really, really sweet. And then the, a couple of weeks afterwards, um, I was watching another restoration program. This one was the was it Jenny and Dave Mars, and they'd done a property and they'd staged a house as well. And they had the same ornament in there and it was like, it was fate. It was like, and I tried to find the ornament, I tried to find where it came from, but couldn't find it anywhere. But it was just this little metal bird with a little crown on it, and it was so sweet. So I thought that was the image that I'm going to use today. So I've gone through my digi collection, and I found this beautiful image of this bird. And originally, I think I got this from the Graphics Fairy a long, long time ago. Um, but because I don't want to cut out the fiddly little feet, I've placed it on a map of Paris. So there you go. So. I'm going to reprint these. I'm going to reprint these on just slightly heavier cardstock or paperweight, just so they're easier to cut out. So I'm going to go away, reprint them, cut them all out, and then I'll be right back. Done. <laughs> right, so like I said, I've cut the bird out, but I've kept the feet on there because it's just fussy cuttings around claws, just too much. Right, so everything else is there. So I've got some distressing. So we'll add just a little bit of distress just around the edges and again this is going to take a few minutes but I just wanted to show you this actual step just so that you know what it is that I'm going to be doing so we'll go around the bird as well just because I did cut fairly close so there's not a huge amount of white space showing just in certain areas. So I will, again, I will carry on just going around all of these individual items, being very, very careful when I get to areas like this and around there, just to make sure I don't rip or tear anything. And then once I've got all these bits done, I'll come back and we're ready to start sticking things down onto the page.
Okay, that's just kind of added a little air of grunge. I've not put them down and brought it in from the side. I've just literally just gone around the edges. Not really putting too much weight on the edge. I just wanted to kind of create a little demarcation line all the way around. So that is going to go right the way across the middle of my page. Um, I did say that most of it would be covered up, but <laughs> you know. So to do the collage, I'm going to be using my favourite cheap spirit glue at the moment, which is this Yoohoo. So we'll just go around the edges and plant this piece right in the middle as our main kind of grounding piece. So right the way, just a little bit towards the top. So that's the first layer. Okay, so the next layer is going to be this postcard. So that's going to come in just about there. So let me just bring that bird in just so I can see. Actually, it wants to be a bit further down, doesn't it? So this is what happens when you, you have to audition these pieces to make sure that you're getting them in the right kind of place to so make sure there's enough room for the crown to sit on the birdie. Yeah, just like that. So we'll move that off to one side so we know that's where that wants to go. So. Okay. So about there, wasn't it? So let's just quickly bring that back in again. Just so we know. I want the postcard to show. That's it, just so it's off that way a little bit. There we go. So this little stamp here is actually not going to be seen. But yeah, I like that. Okay. So this piece now, this is the Corinthian detail piece. I want to go underneath here. I have been watching um, some other kind of collage artists on YouTube recently and it's surprising how differently um, people do collage. So we'll have that out there I think. I'm going to bring that up. So it's about there. I've just got to make sure that there is, I'm still leaving enough room for the bird with the crown to go on. Yeah, so that's about right. And actually, we're just about ready. We can actually stick that bird down almost, <laughs> but not quite. So. Yeah, so I like that. So the map, the Horsel Common map, which is that way, can go next. So because I've got these squarish elements towards the bottom, I want to balance that out by having a few squarish elements towards the top as well. So we're going to have that. Just breaking in that way. It's about about there. So I want that beak to kind of be in that picture there. So the birds, or the, the eggs, can then go over here, lined up with that grid work there. And then the stamp can just go in the corner 
like that. So I've got the lines that are in the actual invoice as well, so they can be used as kind of grid and guidelines for where you want things to go. So look at what's on your background pieces and see if there are any kind of points that you can use to line your other elements up with and keep that kind of pattern going. So let's just lift that up about there. And then we can do that stamp. So that's breaking in like that. Or we could do it so it's breaking in so you see that and you see a little bit of that grey line. I think that's what we'll do. Coming right the way through. So all these lines help just track the eye. And that's what makes a good kind of composition when there's something, some interest that will draw your eye around the page. So that's what you really need to be looking for. But obviously you can't just stick things down all over the page willy-nilly in the hope that people will track um, because that won't happen. All that will happen, it'll just look like it's been a hodgepodge of things put together and that's not what you want. So you've got to kind of have a balance so as you can see there's almost where the structure of these pieces are going to go in there's almost like a circular motion for the eye to follow around if I just randomly stuck all these down without thinking about where they were going to go then it would just look random all right so this is then going to break up this line here About halfway. So that kind of balances with that. So you've got those kind of elements. You see? So that you've got that kind of grid work. Two, four, six. Down the page. Then you've got your central piece across. Balance. It's not symmetrical, but it does kind of balance. Which is exactly what you kind of want. All right. That's fine. Now the bird can go down. You're going down, bird. All right. Let's get some glue up there. On the back of the Paris map. And then on the tail. And then I just want a tiny little bit on the beak. Alright, so I need to position that. I'm trying to keep it so it's fairly straight. And then just gently push that down. There we go. And then the crown, a small tiny little blob on that cross bit at the top because it is quite delicate. Okay, so you get a few little strings with this glue, but I can live with it. There we go. Just tilt it a little bit. That's it. Push it down. Me likey, likey Mikey. Right, so next then, our quote, our phrase, and we're going to keep the phrase towards the bottom, kind of ground it so the page isn't top heavy. So I'm going to place the quote coming in just breaking into that corner there but so you can still read the word Paris just like that and then the final piece of the collage but not the final piece for the page 
is the rest of the slogan and that can come out oh that was upside down that was nearly a schoolboy error and that can cut across halfway between those two providing a bit of a link so, so you've got that circular kind of formation around the page okay and that's the other thing about this glue that I like if you get any if you give it a rub it just comes off you know, like little little cement balls okay so now we've got that what I want to do now is I want to just break up some of these a little bit so I've got um, ages ago I did a stencil called Dirty Circles I've sold all that, that size now, the 6x6, so I've reissued it now in a 5x8 so this is the new larger size so I did say when I'd sold out of all of them I would reissue it so I have done, so it's now a larger size, still the same price but just a larger size so I'm going to go through and just add a little bit of that colour through the stencil just to kind of break up that that background and the foreground so bring that brown into the foreground but I'm being careful to avoid kind of going over the actual quote I've kind of stopped and then over here let me turn that and I'll do that just around where the bird is there so just three little bits of dirty grunginess dirty circles like coffee rings don't have to use all of the stencil all at once you know you can just concentrate on certain little areas of it if you want to I might just add another little bit down there so those little doodle dots there whoops he says throwing his stencil everywhere and I think I'll add another one just about there and then one more Mm. Yeah, maybe just down here. That makes it look all one then. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. And I think I'm going to call it a day. Grab a pen. And then I can just sign this. Now hopefully I'll be able to sign this on just this little bit down here. If I do it small enough. And today's date is the 11th of February. See, I knew that would happen. The pen's run out. It's not run out, it's just stopping working on that. There we go. Just going to get the ink flowing again. There we go. So that's scratched my bird with crown itch, I think, <laughs> hopefully. So I hope you've enjoyed watching me create this collage or mixed media collage art journal page today. If you have, please support the channel by clicking that thumbs up button because it really does help um, spread the word about my YouTube channel and about my artwork. Um, share the video with your friends and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now. I will see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now.
I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you, these videos would not be possible. And don't forget, you can access your exclusive angel only content over on my website. There's a link in the description area below. Thank you.